Hello, 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 and another hello. I'm Nate, welcome to my channel. Uh, today, I have the privilege of talking about Atmos Project's newest release. Uh, they've already released this yo-yo. You can find it currently at their website. Uh, this is the Goji. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the release, but I also have here a prototype that they sent me uh, that I'm gonna kind of do a little comparison here and uh, and then I'll talk mostly about the actual production release. All right, let's get into it. So here is the prototype of the Goji. Uh, I've actually had this one since I've had the Pomelo. So I've had it for quite a while. I don't remember when I did the Pomelo review. Uh, so I've actually had this since then and I don't believe they even had a name for this yet. Uh, it was just kind of, again, in the prototyping stage. And they were just curious of my thoughts on it and give them a little bit of feedback. And, uh, and then they sent me here, I got this just the other day, of the actual production run. And the biggest difference here is that it's about three grams lighter. The production run is about three grams lighter than the actual uh, prototype. As far as the actual width and diameter and the general shape of the yo-yo, it's identical. But even in the hand, you can tell the difference. Uh, you know, that's, that's a substantial difference in cut and weight. Um, and that's really gonna change the play. I do feel generally that the lighter feeling production run is the way to go. I really did like the prototype. I, I did feel like it was just a fun shape and all that and I could see where they were going with it. But that was my main feedback is that it needed to be lighter. Um, and you know, I, I think I maybe said like two grams or something like that, uh, but they went a whole three grams. And I think that was actually really smart. In the production, you're gonna have a lot more of a nimble yo-yo. Uh, you know, this was kind of leaning towards that just a, too heavy for its you know, size and diameter and all that. It just was getting a little bit too clunky, in my opinion. Uh, not quite that brick on a string sort of, you know, thing, but it was getting close to that. But I really did like the shape of it. And I actually really, really like that color a lot as well. So where did they take the weight off? All right, so that's, the, that's a good question. Uh, you can feel it, actually, uh, right here on the IRG. You can, this is a lot more bubbly uh, and a much more pronounced IRG on the rims there. Whereas on here, you can definitely feel the difference there. I think that's where they cut most of it. I don't have like a cutaway or the CAD to see exactly maybe another spot where they took a little bit off, but three grams is substantial enough that you really need to take it probably off more than just one spot. But it looks like they took quite a bit of it off the rims, which, you know, it, you don't have as much of a rim weighted yo-yo. You don't have that sort of perception of it at least, but you can still feel there's quite a bit of rim weight still here and it's a wider yo-yo I'm, I'm getting a lot more yo-yos that are in that smaller diameter i feel like that's kind of a trend that we're seeing a little bit going back to that undersize or even maybe what you consider mid-size but i would consider this still in that mid-size range but mid-size undersize we're seeing a few more of those but what i'm seeing here the trend and i like this actually quite a bit is that it's wider so you're not seeing slim lined small diameter yo-yos or undersized yo-yos. Rather, you're seeing mid-size and undersized yo-yos in diameter, but are also nice and wide flared out. So you're still getting that competition sort of feel, that performance feel in the hand and on the string with a well-balanced yo-yo, uh, but it's gonna be in that nimble, kind of really great for tech especially in those smaller pockets just because it's in the smaller diameter. Not the design, but as far as like the approach to the yo-yo itself, it does remind me of the IST a little bit by Zipline Strings and uh, Paul Harness. Uh, it has that same kind of approach where it's, it's really trying to kind of like break the conventional model of undersized yo-yos. That's what this did. It uh, still fits in within the family of Atmos. Uh, you know, uh, you can tell it's an Atmos yo-yo right away. I don't think they'll be going away from that hub design. It's a nice flat hub design with that little simple circle in the middle. I kind of like that a lot. Uh, it just 
is really clean, very simple, but you can tell by looking at it at this point, this is their third yo-yo, that this is from Atmos. So as I said, the gap on here is super wide. It is an organic yo-yo, but it has that H-shaped kind of thing. Very similar to their debut yo-yo, the Cloudberry. It has a very, very similar um, gap design, you know, where it has a little bit of that H-shape and pulls away from there, but it's also very much organic. I wouldn't necessarily say this is just an undersized version of the Cloudberry. Uh, I think it's more than that. I think this is standing apart on its own, but it has some of those things that it's taken as far as design features. It's taken from their original debut yo-yo, the Cloudberry. Um, you even saw some of those on the Pomelo, right? Um, as far as the actual gap design and all of that. Atmos certainly has a vision for their design and they've kept it consistent. All right, let's go ahead and actually play this and see how it plays on the string. And uh, let's talk about that. All right, welcome back to the on the string section with the Goji by Atmos Projects. Talked about the main difference between the prototype that I had and the production run. I'm not sure if there were other prototypes that went along in that process. I don't know. But the biggest difference there was three grams of weight that they cut off, that they shaved off for the actual production, which is no small feat. Um, it's you know easy enough maybe to take off a half a gram, a gram, but three grams, you're gonna have to uh, take it off uh, in substantial ways, you know, that's certainly gonna change the way the yo-yo plays. You can certainly feel the difference in the weight. I was just playing them side by side, but I won't really talk about that on the video, but the bigger difference is that it, it just feels a lot more just zippy, you know? It's, you can push it a little bit more, um, and it doesn't feel like it's a little sluggish. Uh, I feel like the prototype was just a little too sluggish, and especially when you compare them, you know, with each other, um, it, it just paces better, I feel. And uh, it fits the smaller diameter of the yo-yo as well. You know, I feel like a lot of smaller diameter yo-yos need that sort of, you know, lighter feel. You know, the other thing with this yo-yo too, and I didn't talk about it in the hand, but there is just, like, it's got a beefiness to it. It just has a really nice feel in the hand. It's, it's just as wide, pretty much exactly the same width as the Cloudberry, but it just feels deceptively wider because it is smaller diameter. So I can kind of wrap my hand around it a little bit more, especially with larger hands. one of my favorite flow tricks still. Just a lot of fun. What do I call that, flow coaster? I think that's called flow coaster. I have a tutorial somewhere on this channel with it. As far as those standard tricks, you know, like regens actually work really well for this. It's not high walled. The gap is definitely more of a performance gap. Rejections are nice as well. You know, it does perform really well for things like horizontal and any of those more performance-based type of tricks, especially things going off-plane. Finger spins are going to be all right. I mean, they're not going to be centering, but there's plenty of space to work with there. So if you're wanting just to pop it up and do a simple finger spin, you can. Uh, but you, you could probably pull off more advanced things than that as well. Just probably not being too long extended just because you don't have something that's centering. So I talked about how the prototype certainly felt like it had more rim weight, but, and that this one probably doesn't have as much rim weight because that seems to be where they've kind of shaved off some of that, uh, that weight. But I don't really feel a difference as far as like stability or anything like that's concerned. It's just still really stable, uh, feels really good. And as far as space to kind of pop it up for a thumb grind or things like that, it certainly does just as well. Goji is another win for me. Uh, this, th this might be right up there with the uh, the Cloudberry for me. I mean, the Cloudberry particularly is one of my favorite yo-yos uh, right now in my case. And um, this this might be right up there. It plays different enough for sure. Uh, again, it's not just an undersized Cloudberry. It's more than that. It certainly has a very very different feel in the hand than the Cloudberry does. Not as floaty 
uh, and uh, but it has a little bit more of a zippy feel and a little bit more performance uh, fi uh, feel to it as far as my opinion is concerned. If you've not checked out Atmos projects, now's probably a good time for it. So this is their third yo-yo and they're rocking it. All right, that's gonna do it for now of my review of the Goji from Atmos projects. Until the next one, later.